Hey there, Morbid Maniacs. It's time for another spooky video, a part of Vlogtober. And for tonight's spooky video, I'm going to be talking all about the Flatwoods Monster. Now, I have made a video on this one time before. However, I missed some information in that video. And it was probably really embarrassing because it was back when I first started doing <laughs> paranormal videos on my channel. So we're doing it over. Before I get into this video, I just wanted to say that if you're new here, hello. My name is Melanie and over here we post nothing but paranormal and spooky content all throughout the year. It's Halloween 24 seven over here, folks. But for the month of October, we make it extra special and post nothing but spooky content for 31 days straight. So if you are interested in that, uh, feel free to stick around, subscribe, and become a part of this little Morbid Maniac family. Located in Braxton County, West Virginia, the Flatwoods Monster, also known as the Braxton County Monster, is a huge part of West Virginia folklore. It was reported to have been spotted in the town of Flatwoods, West Virginia. It all began on September 12, 1952 at around 7.15 p.m. when the sun was setting and the night was approaching. When two brothers, Edward and Freddie May, and their friend, Tommy Heyer, were playing on the lawn of the Flatwoods Elementary School, when suddenly something would catch their attention. A bright light would go hurtling through the sky. The object would land on the property of local former G. Bailey Fisher. The boys would immediately take off in pursuit of the object after stopping at their house first. They would explain to their mother Kathleen May what they had just witnessed. May, the three boys, and some of the local children, Neil Nunley, Ronnie Shaver, and West Virginia National Guardsman Eugene Lemon, went to the Fisher farm in an effort to find the mysterious object. As the group reached the top of the hill, they saw a red pulsating light. Eugene Lemon would point his flashlight at the pulsating object, and what he seen next would absolutely terrify him. Standing there on top of the hill was a figure between 10 to 12 feet inches tall. It had a big round red face with a hood around it, which was almost in the shape of a spade. Eyes were an orange slash red color, which seemed to glow. And it, its body was a green or black color, and it almost seemed as if it were wearing a metal skirt. Its hands resembled that of claws. The figure almost appeared to levitate and had a strange sulfur-like smell, mist, which was permeating throughout the air. As soon as the figure had spotted the group, it began gliding towards them and hissing. Eugene Lemon would drop his flashlight and the group would run away in terror. Some of the members of the group would experience illness after seeing the creature. They would experience throat irritation as well as vomiting and nausea, which lasted for days after the incident. The symptoms would be passed off as hysteria. However, the symptoms in which the group was having was very similar to mustard gas exposure. Shortly after the encounter, Mrs. May would report the incident to the authorities. Apparently, directly after this, the men in black were sent to the May's home and would investigate the sighting. They would write down each of their encounters with the creature, which all seemed to be exactly the same. And Mrs. May was said to have gotten oil on her dress that night, which the men in black decided to take and claimed that they would return it to her. However, they never did. What makes this even more creepy is that the local sheriff and deputy had previously been investigating a crashed aircraft 
in the area. And when they were called to the scene after searching, they found no aircraft, no creature, and no mysterious odor. The following day, found on the hillside were skid marks and an odd gummy-like deposit which was on the ground from where the saucer had landed. Newspaper articles, large TV networks, and phone calls were being made from all over the country reporting the story. And it wouldn't be long before another incident would take place. A woman by the name of Audra Harper was walking through the woods one night with her friends near the town of Heaters. Heaters is five miles north of Flatwoods. Audra and her friend were on their way to a nearby store. The original path that they were going to take was overgrown and rutted and so they were taking a shortcut. About a half a mile into their trip, they had noticed that there was a strange ball of fire on the hill right beside of them. Audra would dismiss this and assume that it was her neighbors just fox chasing. When she glanced back, however, the fire had vanished. Standing in its place was a tall, dark silhouette of a man-shaped creature. Absolutely terrified, Audra and her friend would make a bolt for it and run past the boulders and the rocks which were strewn all over the hillside. And the day after the original incident, another one had actually occurred. This time happening along Strange Creek, which is about 20 miles from Flatwoods. A couple by the names of George and Edith Snikowski and their 18-month-old son were driving through the rural area, which was between Clay and Braxton County. Their vehicle would suddenly die out for no apparent reason. George would get out of the car and attempt reviving it, but to no avail. It was nighttime and the road seemed to be deserted. While the man was trying to fix the car, a strange, foul, sulfurous-like odor permeated throughout the air and their baby who was inside of the car began to cry. A strange bright light filled the darkness. Suddenly, the couple were stunned to see the 10 foot tall monster. However, in this encounter, it looked a little bit different. In this encounter, the creature was not wearing a spade-shaped hood. Instead, its head was very reptilian and bony in appearance. The creature would drag its lizard-like hand across the hood of the car before drifting off into the woods. As soon as the creature disappeared, the car restarted and the couple zoomed away. And after investigating the story, a man by the name of Joe Nickel, who was very skeptical, concluded that the bright light was actually that of a meteor, as there was a very strong meteor shower in the area that night. He also believed that the figure in which the group had seen was nothing more than a barn owl which was perched on a tree branch. According to Nickel, three flashing red aircraft beacons were visible during that time of the sightings, stating that this was the cause for the pulsating light. No offense, it's okay to be skeptical about things, but like, how can you just chalk it up to like nothing when they clearly seen what they seen you know like that's not that's not them being delusional like they seen what they seen <laughs> you can't like tell them what they saw regardless of what the creature could have been the stories of the encounters made such a huge impact on the community the flatwoods monster getting its own museum chairs where you can have photo ops gift shops etc leaving its mark on Flatwoods forever. It became such a huge part of the community that the town of Flatwoods would place a welcome sign which read, the home of the Green Monster. The town also holds an annual Flatwood Days Festival. So there was the story of the Flatwoods Monster. What do you guys think of this creepy story? I want to go to Flatwoods. That's one place I haven't, like, I've been through it. I've been through Braxton County and stuff, but, like, 
I've never visited the museum or you know been in the area where the Flatwoods monster was spotted which I believe is on private property so if you ever decide to venture there never trespass like always make get the okay from the people that own the property first yeah it's very close to where I am I feel like that's just a part of the whole like Appalachian Mountains thing like there's so many urban legends and creatures and like aliens and UFOs and just so many strange things that have taken place in the Appalachian Mountains and this being like one of the popular ones. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big ol' thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already and become a morbid maniac. Also be sure to hit that bell notification that way you get notified every single time I upload a new video. I love you guys so so much and I will see you in tomorrow's video.